In respectful presence of our brothers and sisters across boundaries and faiths, let us all join in prayer and worship and gratitude and for guidance. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the gift of life and all its joys. We thank you for today, for all its challenges, in all its splendor. We thank you for the gift of one another. O God of infinite mercy and wisdom, only in unity with your will can all our toils have true meaning. Transform us into willing and able stewards of this world and its future. Bring us together to work with understanding and compassion as we toil and grow weary. We pray for renewed strength and resolve. As we experience pain and sorrow, let us be reminded of untold good beyond. As we see pain and suffering, let us be instruments of your peace and extensions of your loving and healing hands. As we gather here today, bless us all that our collective knowledge be tempered and guided by your wisdom. Grant us clarity of vision to see the common good amidst all distractions. Endow us with humility and purity of heart to transcend all differences and reservations. When we leave this gathering, let us be the change we seek. As we endeavor to practice what we learn, let us be the good we want to see in others. As we work for our learners and their future, let it be that your will be done. In solemn silence, let us conclude with our own personal prayer. Sang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiliw, kaya sa sigatanan, alam ng puso sa dikit mo ibuhay. Upang hinihang, kuya ka ng magiting, sa mandulupi, di ka pasisigil, sa nagatak tutok sa simoy at sa nami kong pangraw. to everybody watching our stream over on Facebook Live. I'm Regina and I'm your host for Pals Free Week to frequently asked topics on the bar subjects. Welcome to our dear deans, speaker, professors, and bar takers tuning into our stream. Day one of the 2022 bar examination has already passed and day two is just around the corner. How is everybody doing? This is the third lecture from this series and we're very excited as we continue to help our barristers prepare for their exams. For today, we will answer the FAQs on civil law to accompany what you already know. The past few weeks frequently asked topics on the Bar Subjects Lecture Series is brought to you by the Philippine Association of Law Schools in collaboration with Drex Bookstore and Drex Edukampion. To know more about our event partners, let's all watch this video. Ako si Romel, Proud Print Production Manager. 
Ako si Giselle, proud pre-press artist. Ako si Dom. We are back. I hope everybody was able to take advantage of the break. We would like to welcome back Dean Miliana to continue his lecture on land titles and deeds. Okay, so let me clarify that. So in this case, B is not a buyer in good faith. Why? Because the spouses X and Y were in possession of the property. We discussed that already, that when the seller is not in possession of the property, there can be no buyer in good faith. So since B is not a buyer in good faith, okay, the action for reconveyance, or rather the spouses, may file an action for reconveyance to recover the land from Mr. B. Okay, so that's for this bar question. 2019 bar, in 2015, O, the original registered owner of a 300 square meter property covered by original certificate of title number D-1234 appointed F as its caretaker. A year after, while O was abroad, F surreptitiously broke open O's safe and stole the duplicate copy of the said OCT. F then forged a deed of absolute sale and made it appear that O sold the property to him. Consequently, F was able to have OCT number 1234 cancelled and in lieu thereof, a new title, transfer certificate of title number T-421 was issued in his name. A few months after, F offered the property for sale to X. After conducting the required due diligence to verify the title of F and finding no occupant in the property during ocular inspection, X signed the contract of sale and thereupon fully paid the purchase price. A few days later, X was able to obtain TCT number T-5678 under his name. When O discovered F's fraudulent acts upon his return in 2017, O immediately filed a complaint for reconveyance against F and X, principally pointing out that F merely forged his signature in the deed of absolute sale, supportedly, purportedly made in F's favor, and thus F could not have validly transferred the title thereof to X. Consequently, he sought the return of the subject property to him. The first question is, Will the prayer of O for the return of the subject property prosper? Explain. So this is also an application of the doctrine of the forged document being a root of a valid title in the hands of a buyer in good faith. Because in the facts, the Mr. X um, is a buyer in good faith okay and again in the hands of a buyer in good faith a forged document can be a root of a valid title so the action for a conveyance will not prosper and and of course o cannot recover the property from mr x now there is a second question to this but it is related to our last topic Okay, we'll discuss that later. So the fourth topic is about the adverse claim. Now, take note that although adverse claim is effective only for 30 days, take note that it will remain effective unless cancelled by filing a ver verified petition before the court. Okay. 30 days lang yan ang effectivity, but I, even after the lapse of the 30-day period, it will remain to be effective until cancelled. 
Now, for noticeably spendence, take note that this is only applicable for least for least spendence to be valid if the action involved or the action is a real action which di directly affects the title to the land or the use or occupation thereof. Okay, that will also include a quieting of title and partition. So you can file a notice of lease pendence if you filed a real action. Okay. Now, just take note of this rule because there is a jurisprudence jurisprudence on this. Um, what will be the rule when the adverse claimant files a notice of lease pendence involving the same right or interest and there is a pending petition for the cancellation of the adverse claim so the situation is there was an adverse claim and there is now a petition for the cancellation of the adverse claim and subsequently the adverse claimant files now a case and now he registered a notice of lease pendence involving the same right or interest. What will happen to the um, adverse, the petition for the cancellation of the adverse claim? The rule is the petition should not or cannot be dismissed on ground of being moot and academic. So, kailangan magpatuloy pa din yung uh, petition for cancellation. Kasi hindi automatic na nag-file ka na ng lease pendence, wala nang visa yung adverse claim. Okay? So, it's still effective. In ha it has to be cancelled. So, tuloy-tuloy lang yung petition for cancellation. But, for the second rule, if the case was already decided with finality against the adverse claimant, okay, the petition for cancellation of the adverse claim becomes smooth and academic. Okay, so since na resolve na yung yung caso against the adverse claimant, in other words, he was um, declared to have no interest on the property. Uh, so, the adverse claim itself becomes ineffective. Okay? Uh, so, there is no need anymore, in fact, for its cancellation because even the petition for the cancellation is already moot and academic. Okay? So, let's look at some bar questions on this one. 2016 bar. Macario bought a titled lot from Ramon, got the title, and took possession of the lot. Since Macario did not have the money to pay the taxes, fees, and registration expenses, he was not able to register the deed of absolute sale. Upon advice, he merely executed an affidavit of adverse claim and had it annotated at the back of the title. Few years after, he received a notice of levy on attachment and read of execution in favor of Alex. The notice, writ, and certificate of sale were annotated at the back of the title, still in Ramon's name. Alex contends that since the affidavit of adverse claim is effective only for 30 days from the date of its registration, then its validity has expired. Macario posits that Macario posits that the annotation of his adverse claim is notice to the whole world of his purchase of the lot in question. Who has the superior right over the disputed property? Macario or Are Alex? Explain. Okay. Now, again, the adverse claim although effect effective only for 30 days, it will remain to be effective even after the lapse of the 30-day period, okay? Until it is canceled. So in this case, although the 30-day period had lapsed already, 
the adverse claim is still effective. And so, Alex is uh, the, 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 the right of Alex is affected by the adverse claim. So, between Macario and Alex, Macario will have a superior right because of the adverse claim that remained to be effective even after the lapse in the 30-day period. Okay? 2001 bar, Mario sold his house and lot to Carmen for 1 million pesos. 1 million pesos payable in five equal annual installments. The sale was registered and the title was issued in Carmen's name. Carmen failed to pay the last three installments and Mario filed an action for collection, damages, and attorney's fees and against her. Upon filing of the complaint, he caused a notice of lease pendants to be annotated on Carmen's title. Is the notice of lease pendants proper or not? Why? Okay, now take note that a lease pendants is only proper if the action is a real action. Now, in this case, apparently, it's a collection of sum of money. This is a personal action, okay? So, in other words, the notice of lease pendants is not proper in this case okay next uh, the last topic will be the assurance fund and we will be discussing the action for compensation against the assurance fund and then the prescription on this uh, action okay so for a person to be able to uh, claim against the assurance fund there are several requisites and I want you to take note of these requisites because these are important. All these requisites must be present before he can claim or you can claim against the assurance fund. The first one is that the claimant must sustain loss or damage or is deprived of land or any estate or interest. Okay. There must be a loss or damage okay, that um, the claimant must suffer a loss or damage. And he must be a registered owner of the property. Okay, Although not transfer, na yon, but previously, he must be a registered owner of the property. Okay. Second, the claimant must not be negligent. So, Kung may negligence siya, in other words, the reason why he lost the uh, ownership to the properties because of his own negligence, then he cannot claim against the assurance fund. Okay. Then the third requ requirement, okay, so the loss, the damage, or deprivation is the consequence of either fraudulent registration under the torrent system after the land's original registration or any error, omission, mistake, or misdescription in any certificate of title or in any entry or memorandum in the registration book. So, ito ang dapat maging cause ng loss, either yung letter A or letter B. For other causes of the loss or the damage, you cannot claim against the assurance fund. Okay. Now, take note that the property should be um, transferred to an innocent purchaser for value. Okay. And then, dapat meron na din siyang certificate of title. Uh, so, requirement dito sa assurance fund that there must be an innocent purchaser for value who also has his own uh, certificate of title to the property. Okay? Don't forget that requirement. Pag kulang yon hindi pa transfer, 
wala pa hindi ka na claim yet against the assurance fund and the fourth requirement okay the claimant must be barred or otherwise precluded under the provision of any law from bringing an action for the recovery of such land okay so dapat barred na siya so should you wait na ma, ma th there must be a declaration first that the the person who um caused the the problem should have become insolvent okay kailangan bang filean mo muna siya ng case and then hindi mo na siya makaka hindi and then if hindi siya makapagbayad sa iyo or hindi mo ma-recover kailangan bang mayroon mo ng gano'n na declaration before you can proceed against the assurance fund okay the answer is no because a prior declaration of insolvency or inability to recover from the usurper is not actually required before the claimant may file an action against the assurance fund so if you when you file an action against the usurper okay you can already file together with with it your action on the or your claim on the assurance fund so pagdating ng execution if hindi ka na maka-recover doon sa usurper then that's the time that you can already claim from the assurance fund okay so yun ang sabi ng supreme court because whether or not funds are to be paid out of the assurance fund is a matter to be determined and resolved at the execution stage okay there is no need for a prior declaration of insolvency before you can file the action okay and, and the last requirement is that the action shall be instituted within a period of six years from the time the right to bring such action first occurred okay now the issue here is when will the six year uh, prescriptive period uh, will commence to run okay okay lang siya um mag start na mag count yung six years okay now i want you to take note of this okay the this is uh there is a recent jurisprudence on this and this might be asked okay in the bar exam the period should be reckoned with from okay not only from the time that the innocent purchaser for value registered his title okay so that means that 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 means the time that a certificate of title is issued to the innocent purchaser for value hindi lang yon okay mayroon pang isang requirement ang sabi ng supreme court it should be upon actual knowledge thereof of the original title holder or claimant so dalawa first there must be a registration or ra rather the transfer of the title to an innocent purchaser for value but that is not yet sufficient for the six year period to run there must be an actual knowledge of the original title holder or the claimant on the assurance fund so from the time of that actual knowledge kung alin mang mauna dyan, or yung transfer of title to the uh, innocent purchaser for value uh, that's the time that the six year prescriptive period will apply okay so kasi ang sabi ng supreme court although usually we have the constructive notice of the issuance of the title and the registration of documents 
in the ROD. But for purposes of prescriptive period, that is not sufficient for the period to commence to run. There must also be an actual knowledge of the original title holder or the claimant to the assurance fund. Okay? So, titignan mo lang kailan ba na-issue yung certificate of title sa buyer in good faith and kailan yung actual knowledge. So, usually yung actual knowledge ang last na nangyayari. So, doon mo siya ika-count. Okay? Doon mo ika-count yung six-year prescriptive period. You count six years from that and you have the six-year uh, period within which to file the action. Okay? So, let's look at some bar exam questions. 2019 bar. In 2015, oh, ito yung dati ng case na uh, bar question na na-discuss natin kanina. So, in 2015, oh, the original registered owner of a 300 square meter property covered by original certificate of title number D-1234 appointed F as its caretaker. Okay, so na, na mention na to. Ang question na, yung second question on this, okay, kasi di ba mayroon ditong buyer in good faith, si Mr. X. Now, the question is, Assuming that O could no longer recover the subject property in view of X registration thereof in his name, may A claim against the assurance fund pursuant to the provisions of the property registration decree be instituted? Explain. Okay, so let's just go back to the requirements. Now, apparently, all the five requirements that we have discussed are present in that uh, bar question okay there was a loss because the the reg registered owner the claimant was deprived of his property and there was no um, facts there that indicate that he is a he was negligent and then the, the cause was the fraudulent registration okay, of the property in the name of the forger. Okay? And then there was an innocent purchaser for value who was able to register his deed of sale. And then he was already barred okay, because he could no longer file an action for reconveyance due to the existence of a buyer in good faith. And lastly, it was filed within the six-year period. Okay. So for the last question, the answer is yes. O uh, can recover against the assurance fund. Okay. That is all. And... I wish you all the best luck and may God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you to Dean Liliano for sharing with us this extensive knowledge on, on land titles and deeds. And thank you to our partner, Strex Bookstore and Rex Campion for making this event possible. Um, due to time constraints and Dean's availability, we won't be able to go through your questions right now. But we will compile them and have them have Dean Mariana issue the answers to our Facebook pages. We would like to remind everybody that our frequently asked topics